Good morning, grandkids. <coughs> and of course, I start right off coughing. Here's the next couple of chapters in my story about my game of the listener. This is going to be chapter two and chapter three. After trekking through the swirling snow of high passes and pine-covered mountains, I finally arrived at the border. I could see below me where the border gate was open, and on the other side was a horse-drawn wagon and several people. It looked like guards were tying the hands of three or four men, forcing them into the wagon and gagging one of them. I had no idea what was going on. Was it illegal to cross over without papers? Had they caught some roaming bandits? Whatever it was, I wanted no part of it. I moved off farther into the trees, glad I had decided not to travel by paths or roadways. Even though the going had been treacherous at times, slipping and sliding on the snow, I often wondered if I died out here, I might be nothing but a pile of bones by the time anyone else happened this way. And of course, the wolves were always in the back of my mind, always skulking around. As I came out of the trees, way farther down from the high passes that I had crossed, I found the snow melting, the air chilly and crisp, but the sun was shining in blue skies. I took a deep breath and just stood there taking in the beautiful view. A mile or so to my right, the road was curving away and I saw the same wagon lumbering along loaded with the prisoners with guards on horseback leading the way and following behind. Oh, let me tell you more about the wolves. Biting them off is more treacherous than slippery slopes. Thankfully, they seemed to hang in packs of only two or three. If there had been more, I doubt I would have survived. What weapons I have or managed to steal or take are few and not the best. One of the first things I'll have to take care of when I reach a town. Most of the wolves up in the snowy mountains were white, but down here in the lower regions, they're black and gray. In either case, they certainly blend into their environment. I have a bow with some iron arrows, which isn't too effective when they can suddenly get up close and personal. Then I have to get out my dagger, but close and personal puts a lot of sharp pointy teeth in your face. I have a few bites and scratches, but nothing too serious so far. I'm acquiring some nice pelts, though, to sell when I get to town, and I've had meat to eat. I should make enough coin to buy better weapons. The string on this bow is stretched, and the daggers are dull. Of course, I'll always steal or take more to save coin. It's getting long toward evening and I made camp in a small enclosure among some huge boulders. It's a nice snug site which feels like my own little cave and on the other side of a hill so that if I keep my fire low I might not be seen by the soldiers. I had some good eating, wolf haunch on a stick, roasted over my fire, fat dripping into the coals. Can't get much better than that. Just hope the guards can't smell it and show up for dinner. There's never a lack of water. There's usually an icy stream not too far away, bubbling clean over rocks and gravel, coming from mile-high waterfalls seen here and there in the mountains. I thought I'd leave you these few notes, whoever you are, 
before I bed down. I'm hoping the small fire will be enough to keep the critters away. I did see a bear off in the distance today. I tried to stay downwind from him. Well, sleep will soon overtake me. Chapter 3 I woke up today to blue skies, sweet-smelling flowers, and bird song in the air. But I saw it was going to be a black day for those prisoners. I think a beheading's going on. Even though the sun was shining, there were wisps of lazy fog meandering through the woods here and there and lying low over any waterways. The absolute beauty of Skyrim was really beginning to hit me. I may be a cold-blooded assassin, but I guess my one weakness is nature. But back to the prisoners. I had been following the wagon and guards from a safe distance, letting them lead me to wherever. As I got closer to a town, I found myself on a hillside, looking down on what was going on. They had arrived at the small village and was waiting for the gates to be open. As the wagon rumbled and rattled over the cobblestones into town, parents were shooing their kids into the houses. I decided I no longer needed to stay out of sight and wanted to see if a traitor was here. I climbed down the hill and walked into town, mingling with some of the other people. But man, oh man, there were guards everywhere, some yelling at prisoners, some taking names. There was a mage ready to cast a spell at any direction of trouble, a monk praying, a female officer, thrilled at putting her boot to men, forcing them down onto a chopping block, a huge executioner gleefully ready to start swinging his double-edged axe. It looked like total chaos to me. You'd think a carnival had come to town. Just as I was thinking I'd better get out of here, things really came unglued. I saw a dragon. It swooped down out of the sky, landing on a tower in front of everyone, and started spraying everything in sight with fire. It was a scaly black dragon, a massive, which made for a lot of firepower. Then it was total bedlam. People were screaming and running, the dragon was circling, arrows were flying, buildings were burning, and people were dying. I grabbed up my bedroll and pack with both hands and hightailed it out of that town and back into the woods. I heard later that the town was totally destroyed and I don't know if anyone survived. Later on, the road had made I'd been following away from that poor town of Hel Helgen suddenly made a hairpin turn and standing before me was a stone with three monoliths on top of it, oozing magic. But before this story, I want to tell you something about this beautiful but strange land, which in a way is related. There's something in the air here which is hard to explain, but I feel it's an important part of Skyrim. It's, it's like a charge, like tiny touches of lightning on the skin, a tingling. And strange things happen, just a glimpse from the corner of your eye. Some of the most ordinary looking people seem to have some extraordinary abilities. The best word I can come up with is magic. It's like I feel magic in the air. It has often left me with my mouth hanging open. But I digress. I stepped onto the stone platform and slung off my gear and started to examine these strange tall stones. They were carved with designs and runes that were unknown to me, but each had two words which I could read. One was warrior stone. 
hmm, better fighting skills probably. But I was a good fighter with the proper weapons. I moved on to the next one, the mage stone. Using a mage's skill would be fun. Farther back in the mountains, I watched two mages taking down a lone man. They were shooting fire and some kind of ice out of their hands at him. The poor man fell before them, trying to fight against magic with a blade. No, that wouldn't be useful for an assassin. Next, I stood before the thieves stone. Now, here was something I could use. I was all into stealing, sneaking, and shadows. What were they, really? Who put them here and why, I wondered. I reached out to run my fingertips over the carvings, and as soon as I touched the stone, it was like a voice spoke in my head. Choose wisely, as you can only have one. I staggered back in surprise and nearly fell. I placed my hand back onto the stone and thought, this is the one. But what do I do? As soon as I had thought this is the one, all of the grooves and etchings started to glow, and a blinding light shot up out of the top, straight up into the sky. I felt a power move through me. I jerked my hand away, and the beam of light soon blinked out, and the glow on the stone faded away. I didn't know what just happened. But I had to assume I got an increase to my abilities. I could hardly wait to find out. I decided to make camp for what was left of the day right here beside the stones. There was a river flowing past here on its way past the town, not too far ahead. I felt like taking a refreshing dip in its icy waters, then having a bite to eat. I might then just lay back with my hands behind my head and watch the fluffy clouds float by and the hawks wheeling in the sky and think about the magic that just took place here. And that's the end of chapter three. So I will be back with you all next Friday to read chapter four and five. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm having a lot of fun writing it. I'm surprised at how, how dedicated I've been because I've been writing every day. So I hope, I think, thank you for being here and hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next Friday. Bye-bye grandkids.